Hi everyone, Shane Armand Rowe here, and today we are all about Big Fish Game Launcher. Let's get started. First thing you're gonna do, of course, is to switch over to desktop mode. All right, so go ahead and open up Brave and you're gonna to go to bigfishgames.com. Go ahead and sign into your account and then uh, go to your game library and just download the first one on the list. You'll notice that it's probably going to download the Big Fish Games installer. Now you see, I've already downloaded it once here for testing purposes. We'll go ahead and download it again just for giggles and it's pretty small now this is obviously not the game this is the launcher itself so now we're done here in brave we're going to open up our dolphin file manager if you do not have split screen a delete button compact data and shader caches over here in your places i recommend you check out my dolphin tricks and tips to make sure that your dolphin uh, looks similar to mine. Otherwise you might get lost a little bit in here. But for the sake of argument, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna go to uh, home and I've got home in both sides here. And you're gonna go to your downloads folder and you can see I've got two of them now, obviously, but it doesn't matter. We got one of them and that's all we really need. Let's go ahead and minimize dolphin and we're going to launch steam because this is going to be a non steam game that we're gonna add for the launcher. And of course, two screens gets me every time. Okay. Now we're gonna go down here to add a game, add a non-Steam game, hit browse, and we're going to go to Big Fish. I've got, like I said, I got two of them, so it doesn't really matter which one I pick. Hit open. Okay, so now it added it as this name, Big Fish Games, blah, 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 blah. Okay, you'll need that in a second. So we'll add it to the Steam games, go to our library, and then you're going to have to find that. So I know it started with big, so let's filter it out here. Ah, Big Fish Games. Here it is. Whew. Quite the uh, quite the name. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go to the gear properties. And we need to turn on some sort of Proton compatibility. It's a non-Steam game. Steam isn't going to help us run this at all. So we're going to go ahead and force a version. And Proton Experimental is usually really good for digital lockers. So we'll go Proton Experimental and we're ready to run for the first time. Now, the first time run is going to install the launcher into a Proton prefix. See, it's downloading all of its other good stuff that it needs. It's really just a bootstrapper that you download. It does the rest. And it will do its thing. I'm not gonna cut any of this out. Um, I know it runs a little bit longer when I do this, but this way, at least, um, you'll be able to see everything that happens. And if anything weird happens, I'll leave that in. And I agree. Big Fish Manager is being installed. And the last of the goodies go. Okay, so it's got to put in some uh, requisites there. Okay, so uh, I don't need to really register because I've already, I've already got uh, the app here. Uh, no games to play, so sad because I don't have, I have not signed in yet. Right, so let's go ahead and sign in, and once again, you'll sign in with your account info. Okay. Easy peasy. Now, before we get started installing games, I'm gonna show you a little trick I call centralized storage. This makes sure that you don't lose the game inside of the Proton prefix because it's really super easy to do. So while this is doing its whole sign-in thing, let's hop on over to our uh, Dolphin file manager again. And over here on the left, I have my home folder. So this is my SSD. And over here, my primary, which is my SD card. Now you'll see I have a folder called games in each one. This is where I use centralized storage to store every game I download from a third party digital locker, such as Ubisoft or EA. So if I go into these guys, you'll see, well, I have nothing installed. Well, that's fun. Uh, but I will be using these in just a moment. 
Let's go ahead and see how we're doing with our sign in. Okay, we are signed in. So now you can go to uh, your games or whatever, find a game that you want to install. And I don't know why it's saying I have no games. Let's see, let's go to purchase history instead. Maybe my games is what you have installed. Okay, 12 Labors of Hercules. It's a very old game, but this will be good for our demo. Now, I could start downloading now, but it's gonna stuff this game inside the Proton Prefix. Uh, if I delete Big Fish Games, it takes everything inside the Proton Prefix with me. So I don't want that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Options, Downloads, okay? And then we're gonna change this download folder. But before we do that, we have to do the complicated part, sorry. You need to go to your Compat Data folder. Here's the Compat Data folder's entire path. This is a hidden file system. So you are gonna to have to make sure that you have show hidden files turned on. Once again, I beseech you, go watch my Dolphins Tricks and Tips video. You will not be burdened by any of this. Now we're gonna sort this list in Compat Data by Modified until we find the most recent prefix that was made, 220, blah, blah, blah. It's all random, yours is gonna be different. We're gonna go in there, we're gonna go in the prefix folder, we're gonna to go to drive C, and then either on the SD card side or off the home folder, I'm gonna take that games folder and I'm gonna left drag it into this drive C and say link here. So what this does is I'm gonna set this games folder inside of the fake drive C for the prefix. And every time it installs a game, it's really installing it over here. That way it's outside the prefix. And a lot of these, some of these launchers, at least, at least this one, you can run the game without the launcher after you get it installed. So let's go ahead and browse. And we're gonna go to my computer, the fake C drive. Hey, there's games right where we said it would be. Excellent. So now it installs in C games, which is this, but it's actually a link to this. So let's get started. Sorry if that's a little confusing. I have a whole video on centralized storage if you want sort of the long version of that. Now we're ready to download 12 labors. 12 labors of Hercules. Fortunately, it's very, very small. Now, if we go in this games folder, I guess I could kind of minimize this a little bit. Once this thing starts installing, you'll see that it drops right into this games folder. See? Now, of course, you can always run the launcher for Big Fish, um, or you could actually create your own non-Steam launcher just for this. And we're gonna go through that in just a minute. Now, we still have another step to do on this whole Big Fish launcher thing. We're gonna have to do that too. So we got a few different things left to go. See, now it's activating it because I own it. So I'm assuming it writes some sort of an INI I file or something. I don't know. I don't know Big Fish all that well. And I think it's trying to upsell me on something. I think it's uh, supposed to be a holiday sale in here or something. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we don't need that nonsense. Sometimes it's a little funked out here. I'm gonna go ahead and close Big Fish. Okay. And then you'll have to take a look at Steam. It, it may stop, it may not. Some of these launchers like to hang out in the background. In this case, I'm just gonna hit stop. Now, before we show you how to do a dedicated launcher for 12 Labors of Hercules, this is still pointing to this installer EXE. We don't, we don't want that. We want it to point directly to the launcher file. So let's go ahead and go back here. And we're probably still here in our Proton Prefix in Drive C. And we want to go to Program Files x86, Big Fish Client, and we are looking for the executable that makes sense, which is BFG Client. Right click it, copy location. That's gonna give you the entire path. Okay, we're done here. Go ahead and edit the Big Fish properties, and we're gonna paste that whole path right in here. Again, keyboard is helpful. All right, now, because this does not surround it with quotes for you, you're gonna have to put double quotes on the tail end and at the front. Now select that whole thing, copy it, drop down to start in and paste it in there. We're gonna get rid of the actual executable because all we need is the start in path, which is 
just like that. Awesome. And now we might as well change this because it's not the installer anymore. This is Big Fish Games. That's the launcher. We're good. Okay, just to make sure that we're good, we'll go ahead and launch it again. This time there should be no installer, no anything. There we go. And we're we're back. All right. All right, 12 Labors of Hercules is installed, activated. Now we could play it from here and it would work. Now, what we really wanna do though, is make it its own launcher off of Steam, right? So let's get out of Big Fish. I'll force it to stop. And we are going to add a non-Steam game and we're gonna browse. Now, you know exactly where this is because we set up the shortcut for it. So you go to home, games, there it is, 12 Labors of Hercules and 12 Labors of Hercules.exe will open it. Okay, so 12 Labor of Hercules. Okay, add selected programs. Go into our, this is sort of weird. Sometimes when you add, when you add a, a new game to Steam like this, like the Steam interface locks up. You see, I'm trying to click in here to search for 12, but it's not working. This is normal. I'm gonna leave this in here just so you can see it. This happens and it's not just you. Okay, so let's search for 12. There we are, there's our EXE. Now, again, this is a Windows game, right? So we must assign it a version of Proton. Compatibility. We're gonna force it to be the same as we did before, Proton Experimental. Great. That should be it, I think. Let's find out, let's play it. Hey, this is looking good. All right, now I actually, the, a lot of big fish games are designed for PCs with a mouse, right? Um, there are a few control options. We're gonna go over that in just a minute. Um, but but it, it really isn't going to work out of the box without doing some changes to your controls if you don't have a physical mouse to work with like I've got here. Like right now, even the trackpads. Well, I guess the trackpad works in, in um, desktop mode, but it's, I'll show you how to set this up. Let's go ahead and get out of this. We know that it works. All right. Now, when we're ready to get rid of this game, right? You're gonna delete this, right? So you can go ahead and remove it. Now, here's the fun part. It'll, you can remove the game and it will still be sitting safe and sound right here. Because all it's gonna do is delete the new Proton prefix that was made. So this Proton prefix doesn't have anything in it. There's no launcher in there, there's no game in there. All this is, is something to execute what you have over here. So when you remove this, and I'll, well, I don't wanna prove it to you yet. Let me show you how to change the controls first. And then I'll show you how to properly get rid of games when you're using centralized storage. What a lot of people don't know is that everything in the prefix is taken when you remove a game, a non-Steam game. It takes out everything in the prefix. People lose their 120 gigabyte downloads and they lose their minds. Because sometimes you have to reinstall these lockers. Sometimes you they have a problem and you have to change Proton versions and that wipes out the prefix and you lose all your stuff. So we're pretty much done here. We've got a game working. We got the, um, we got the launcher working. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go just return back to gaming mode and we'll show you a couple of uh, options for uh, making sure that the game works appropriately with the Steam Deck's controls. Now you can expect none of these games to be optimized for Steam Deck or have Steam Deck controls. It's gonna be hit and miss. You're gonna have to be on your own for that. All right, we're back to gaming mode and you can see here, we have a big fish launcher and we have our 12 labors of Hercules. Now you could go in and rename this, right? Add some cool cover art if you like. Uh, there's many ways to do that. Separate, I have plenty of videos on showing you how to change your artwork, so we're not gonna really do that in this video. What we are gonna do though, is go in and look at some of our control options. So I already set this to mouse only, so I'm a cheater. Um, but there's all sorts of templates. It's probably gonna default to gamepad with joystick trackpad. Obviously not what you want. In the case of big fish games, time management games, things like that, um, mouse only works really good. So I would use mouse only for most of your uh, big fish games. Okay, with that in mind, let's try it out again. Let's make sure it still works in gaming mode. 
and then we'll check out how the actual Steam Deck controls work with this. So now the trackpad should be working, and it does. And I should be able to use, I'm sorry, I'm reaching around my microphone here. Um, you'll have to, uh, so you'll go down and then you'll use um, the triggers to act as mouse clicks. Perfect, right? And then, uh, sorry, again, I'm doing this uh, one-handed around my microphone. And there you go. It, it's working fine. I'll get into the actual game so you can see that the game itself works. Again, I am not a big fish person, but my wife sure is. All right, there, it works fine. And that's, I mean, that's it. That's, that's all there is to it. I know it seems like a lot, but uh, it works. You can use separate launchers per game. That allows you to use separate Proton versions if you need to. It lets you use separate control methodologies if you want to. Centralized storage is really, really good. Um, and I did promise I'd show you how to get rid of this thing, right? Let me take my mouse back up here. I'm gonna exit the game. Now you could exit the game, you know, with a hard exit, but I'm just gonna go through it the way it wants me to. Okay. So now when you're ready to get rid of this thing, if you're to, if you were to go ahead and remove this, remove the non-Steam game, the game is still there. I, I assure you. Now it's not here, but if we were to go jump back to the desktop real quick, because we need Dolphin to really affirm this. Go back to Dolphin and take a look in that games folder. It's still there and it's ready to go. So if you were to remove Big Fish Games, right? If you were to remove that, it would take the launcher and everything that it installed with it. However, the game, since you're using centralized storage, will stay safe. Now, some people might find that uh, inconvenient. I want everything, if I'm gonna remove Big Fish, I want everything gone. But sometimes you don't. Sometimes you wanna offload this to a, a drive where you don't have to download it again. Sometimes you, you can make a separate launcher for it and call it a day. There's a number of reasons why you might wanna leave it behind. In fact, in the old days, when you deleted a uh, non-Steam game, it left the compat data folder behind. Now it doesn't, it cleans everything up, but centralized storage protects your game from accidentally being nuked because you deleted Big Fish or something like that. So obviously you'll wanna go ahead and uh, select it and then hit delete or, and just get rid of it, you're good. You can do it a number of different ways. But that's it, that's Big Fish in a nutshell. Uh, listen, if you like what you saw, as usual, like, subscribe, hit the bell, you guys know what to do. I'm Shane Armandro, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time, take care.